Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial in the Introduction to Scripting Roblox Lua series. Last time we went over for loops with arrays. Today we're going to go over a sort of different variation of for loops with any sort of Lua table. So let's start by inserting a script into server script service and blowing up the text. So we already know that we could loop through this one equals hi two equals hello and we could actually give this a better name greetings three equals aloha etc and we know that we could do loop through that by saying for i equals one number greetings do print greetings I right so we figured out how this works in the last tutorial if you don't understand this yet please go back and watch the last tutorial because it's going to help a lot with this one well a lot of times in Lua arrays aren't really there you need to be able to loop through every value in a regular table a table that could have a key like it could have one two three but it could also have a key like type equals hello stuff or text okay it could have different types of keys indexes different indexes remember these are the indexes and these are the values okay index value in fact I'm even gonna do that here index equals value okay so we have our indexes and our values if the indexes don't match what needs to be in an array meaning start at one and increment all the way to the size of the array if we don't have an array we have a table but not an array but we still need to loop through everything how are we going to do that well Lua thankfully provides an amazing method for this so we're going to change this now to table misspelled because it's a keyword and we're going to just keep it as is okay so we know that there's five variables in here each with different indexes and they're varied in their type of indexing so here's how we're going to do this we're going to write for i comma v in pairs table do okay so now let me explain what this is and you know what let's change this up real quick for index value so how this works is first you define a new variable which will hold the index of the item in the table that you're currently in this works a lot like the i in the for i equals one number do this is just the index this part of what's in the table it's just the index of the current item that you're at when you loop through this remember this is actually another type of loop another for loop I'll get to how it exactly works in a moment but the next variable that you define which is separated by a comma you can add spaces and whatever but it's typically just a comma is the name of the variable you want for to hold the value that's within the table so in this this is the value part of it okay this is going to hold the value that you're currently up to in the table next we have in so for each index and value in something do now we it would make sense if we just said for each index and value in the table do but Lua has a little bit of a hard time looping through just a regular table so what it does is it provides a built-in function which to boil it down simply and to just uh, get to the point here pairs this built-in function in Lua just converts the table into a key value pair sort of thing so that you can have your table converted so it can be looped through easier by Lua to just really boil things down so for index value in pairs and pairs is a function so you just feed in the table that you need to convert 
This pairs thing just gives you the indexes and the values in another type of list. So it doesn't really matter, but it makes it easier for it to work. So again, we have index value. We're going to change this back to IV though, because this is the typical setup for a for each loop. This is what it's called. It's called a for each loop. I'll often call it a for IV loop, but it's technically called a for each loop because you're going through each one, each thing within your table, but you're not really having to increment anything. You're just going through everything. Okay, in no particular order. Literally, there's no real order to a for each loop. It just goes off of whatever it gets through the table. So we're not guaranteed we're going to get one, two, three type index in that order. We could get index three type one, two. It doesn't really matter though when you're using this. If you need it to work a certain way, you'll have to write your own scripting method of getting it ordered correctly. But for a for each loop, Typically, you don't need it in a correct pattern. So for IV in pairs table do, now all we're going to do is we're going to print table, oops, table dot dot i dot dot there equals dot dot v. Okay, so we're printing table i, which is going to be the index, which could be type, it could be index, it could be 3, 2, or 1, and then we're going to print the value. Okay, so I'm going to clear the output and then test run. Here we are. Table 2 equals hello, table index equals value, table 3 equals aloha, table 1 equals high, and table type equals text. Again, you'll notice it wasn't in any real particular order. It just kind of went through and it printed each one, but obviously it doesn't go one, two, three type index. It goes pretty varied. That's okay though, because typically again, when you're doing this, you're not so much so worried about getting them in an order, you're worried about getting them all. So it's okay for it to be out of order like this. Arrays are used when you need things in a certain order. A table like this is typically used only when you don't need them in any particular arrangement. So we have table two equals hello, table index equals value, etc. We see that it actually printed correctly. We see that the i was the index. It was both a number and it was a string in the varied cases. And then we always got the value correctly. Again, it's not in the correct order if there is a such thing as a correct order, but it did print everything correctly. So this is how you loop through a table with varied and mixed indexes, or maybe it doesn't have mixed indexes. Maybe it's a perfect array, but you can't be sure of it because you didn't create the table. You got the table from somewhere else. This is an awesome method to be able to loop through everything in a table no matter what it is. And while I'm saying table, I should also say it's a great way to loop through everything in an object. And we'll be explaining that later on, but just understand that that is a possibility too. On top of this, there is one slight variation of what we're learning here today, and it's called the for IV in I pairs. It's I pairs instead. If we switch this to I pairs, it actually returns it back to essentially for i equals one number table do. It's basically the same thing. The i just changes it to where it indexes based on an integer and it goes up steadily. It does basically go in order. This won't work, however, if you have a table like this. It'll only work if you have an array. So if we go here and we print through this, We now see we get table 1, table 2, and table 3, all in correct order. This is because we switch it to I pairs, which is just another way of writing the loop that we learned in the previous tutorial. It's very useful for shortening the writing. It saves you the line of having to write V equals table, oops, table I, and it's sometimes just more useful. However, some people, including the 
prominent Roblox developer CrazyMan32 have proven that this is a slightly, ever so slightly slower version of the fry equals one number do loop. So this is slightly less efficient, but it is a possibility if you'd like to use it. But remember that pairs is what you want whenever you have a regular table. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you guys later.